Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is 12 o'clock on a Sunday and it's time for a Q&A. This is uh, where I take all your questions that you've asked over the course of the week and I try and answer them as best as I can. First of all, thank you again for so many awesome questions. Really appreciate it. Before I get onto the questions, a couple of really cool big announcements that I want to tell you. Number one, we actually have a website for Magic TV now. It's super exciting. You can see the schedule down there. There's uh, links through to the different playlists. So you can actually, everything's kind of in the same place. There's also um, other stuff on there that is going to be coming soon. So if you want to check that out, uh, the web address is www.magictv.com. Dot org. That's www.magictv.org. And I now have an email address as well. Rather than trying to contact me in all manner of different places, I have an email address specifically dedicated, set up for anything to do with this channel, which is craig at magictv.org. So that's the first kind of big announcement. Let me know in the comments what you think of the website. The second thing that I want to, uh, I want to let you guys know is I've listened to what you've said. And I've made it happen. So uh, a lot of people have said, oh my God, I love the content. Absolutely amazing. Talk Magic interviews are very, very popular. Um, but some of them can be quite long. Like Sean Farquhar's was just under two hours. It's a very long time. Um, and is there a possibility to take the Talk Magic videos and put them on to a podcast? And the answer is yes, we have done that. We have made it happen. So we now have a podcast called the Talk Magic Podcast. It's not going to be everything on the uh, on the channel. It's only going to be for the Talk Magic interviews. Um, so uh, they are going to go up on a Friday at five. So uh, the actual interviews go up on the channel at Tuesday at nine o'clock, as you probably know. Uh, three days later, they'll go up onto the podcast. Uh, so, you know, if you're out driving and you want to listen to it uh, and not sit down in front of your phone or your, your laptop and watch it for an hour, then you can listen to the interviews by going onto the podcast. Now, you can get to the podcast. We're, we're currently putting it into all the major platforms. It's already on Spotify. It's already on Apple Podcasts. And uh, I think it's already on Heart Radio and a whole bunch of other places. Uh, so, yeah. So if you want to listen to it as a podcast... Uh, you can do that, and I'll put a link in the description down below. Uh, one thing to say is at the moment, we're uploading all of the old episodes of Talk Magic. So we've just uploaded Justin Miller. We're going to go through all of the old episodes of Talk Magic and get them up. And then probably starting January, we'll be uploading... Uh, we'll be uploading them the new ones then. So as of January, um, think, uh, you know, if the interview goes up on a Tuesday you can get the podcast on a Friday. Now, obviously, a lot of the time, the people I'm interviewing on Talk Magic, they do tricks as well and they perform tricks. You won't be able to see the tricks that they perform. Uh, but obviously, that's what the YouTube video is there for. I'd rather you watch it on YouTube because that's the platform that I kind of put all this stuff on. But I know a lot of people are keen to have the longer interviews on a, on a, on a podcast. So now you can subscribe to the Talk Magic podcast. We even did a really cool, cheesy intro to the podcast and uh, you know I'll give you a sneak peek of it you can listen to it right now but beware this is major cheese magic magic and the magic. world of illusion magic tv and craig petty proudly present the talk magic podcast Every week we bring you awesome interviews with the greatest magicians that have ever lived. And now, here's your host, Craig Petty. So there you go. We have a new website. We have a new podcast. Um, so very exciting and a new email address to contact me on. Now, without further ado, let's have a look at some of your questions. So the first question here is by Jerome Damien. Hey, really, really great to hear from you again, man. I hope you're okay. Uh, the question is, any insight on the Dave Forrest issue? I love Cubism and I remember that you like it as well. What happened with Cubism Maestro? I haven't got any inside knowledge on this. Um, I know Dave Forrest ish i mean i haven't spoken to him in a couple of years actually i lie i bought something off him on a second hand 
uh, sort of magic type thing. Uh, but I haven't really spoken to him in about two years. Before that, uh, we know each other. You know, if we saw each other at Blackpool, we'd say hi and we'd have a chat. I competed in a competition against him uh, a few years ago. Uh, I think it was the IBM close-up competition. So I know, I know Dave Forrest and I know he's a very passionate magician. And over the years, he has created a lot of really good magic. I mean, some of the stuff that Dave Forrest has created is outstanding. Uh, the stuff that he did under his full 52 pounder was great. Um, I think what's happened here, I don't think Dave, I mean, he's been lynched by the magic community. And, and, and you know, I, I don't know the inside story. I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, you could say that he deserved it because for those of you that don't know, he, he released a product called Cubism which is a chop cup that I actually do, that's designed to look a little bit like a, uh, a dice cup and it's very good quality. And then he came up with the idea of doing like a three cup set and you have lots of dice and everything. So he put it on Kickstarter and he got the Kickstarter project funded very, very quickly. And then he never delivered the, the end product or I think it took years. I think there's still people now that haven't had that end product delivered. And he's lost a lot of goodwill within the magic community, obviously, because he's kind of taken people's money and then not kind of given back what he said he was going to do, which is terrible, uh, really. Um, and that's kind of where the Cubans issue is. I don't have any inside knowledge. I don't know anything beyond that. What I will say is, uh, knowing Dave to the extent that I do know him, I don't think he probably intended in screwing people over. I think he intended to get the project funded. I think it probably cost more money than he anticipated. And I think that he was probably in a very awkward situation. And financially, it was very difficult. And I think that one bad decision led to another bad decision led to another bad decision. I think that maybe uh, he, he started lying as to, you know, oh, the cups haven't been delivered. This hasn't been delivered. This hasn't been delivered. And then that lie led to another line, led to another line. Before you know it, you're, like, you're in a well, you're in a hole that you've dug yourself and you can't see any way out. And it's a horrible situation. I had a similar sort of thing with Red. Obviously, I've never taken people's money on that. But I know first, and maybe I'm being a bit sympathetic because I have had the entire magic community to turn against me. I know how vicious people can be on the Magic Cafe. Um, all I can say about the whole situation is, as far as I'm aware, he's closed 50, full 52 down. I've, um, you know, I've kind of, uh, he was selling off his stock on secondhand Magic sites. So I don't think he's doing full 52 anymore. I think he's pretty much dropped out the Magic community. As far as I'm aware, I think everyone should be given a second chance. If he can make it right, and I don't know where we are with this. I don't know if there's orders still outstanding, but I think his priority should be to make this right and either give refunds or give the product that people have originally bought. I think a lot of people have been way more understanding than they need to be. I think if you can make it right and he, he you know, he, he, he is a good guy. He is a good magician. I think that maybe we should give him a second chance, but that's not down to me. It's, it's not a product I bought. I would probably be very annoyed if I, you know, if I kind of had that happen to me. I have had similar stuff happen to me. But again, I know how horrible it can be within the magic community when everybody turns against you. It's just horrible. It's sickening. It really is horrible. Uh, but it is possible to get out of it. Uh, but he has to do the right thing. What he can't do is hide underneath the rock. Beyond that, I don't really have any other insight into what's happened. I, I haven't spoken to anybody. That's just me looking from the outside in. Okay, so uh, next up we got Mr. Harmon. Hey buddy, hope you're well. Uh, what are we saying here, Mr. Harmon? Loving my cube magic at the moment. Good, because I absolutely adore cube magic. Uh, would love to learn more. I already have Carl Hines DVD, Cube FX, Stephen Prudridge's Cube 3, and Venom Cube, and Ardy Insta by Henry Harriet. My gosh, is there any more cube magic stuff that I should be checking out? Um, wow, okay, that's a great question. Um, have you got the original Rubik's Dream? Because honestly, I think it's well worth getting the Rubik's Dream for the mini cube and shell. And the reason I say that to you is depending on where you're performing anyway, if you perform exclusively on stage, Venom Cube is awesome. There's nothing better than Venom Cube if you're performing on stage. However, it is not a close-up trick. It's not the sort of trick that you can do close-up. If you want that cube matching style effect, 
then the original Q, uh, the, the original Rubik's Dream, not Rubik's 360, because then that's more of a stage prop again. But the original Rubik's Dream, it came with a cube shell, but it also came with a mini cube and a mini cube shell. And I absolutely love that because, and that's what I do a lot of the time close up. I'll bring a cube out, I'll have somebody mix it, I'll bring out the mini cube, I'll have somebody mix the mini. No, sorry, I bring out a cube and I mix it, but I'll put it into the correct position. I have the mini cube mixed, and then I just load the shell on as I take it back. And you've got that cube matching effect, but you just need a little cube in one pocket and a big cube in the other pocket. So if you do walk around, if you do mix and mingle, and it's important to you to have tricks reset, then I would seriously consider looking down the route of, um, uh, yeah, I'd seriously consider looking down the route of getting the original Room Extreme. Other than that, there's a really nice download by, uh, by Heim Golden, Goldberg, Goldenberg and Assy Wind called Cubism, which is just beautiful. Uh, it's a very nice routine that I perform as well. It's well worth looking into that. And uh, let me see if there's anything else. Penguin have just bought out a new... Uh, Rubik's Cube routine. I think it's called the Quick Solve Rubik's Cube or something, which there's a big buzz about. So you can check that out on Penguin. I believe that's available to buy right now. I will be getting one to review at some point. Uh, but that's 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 decent, uh, or at least it's, it's meant to be decent. It's got a real big buzz going about it. And then the other thing that I'd consider looking at is this guy called Kev G., um, who's a very good friend of mine when I did the Ryland Happy Birthday uh, video. Kev was, the, Kev was one of the guys on there that was doing a trick on there. And uh, Kev is an amazing Rubik's Cube guy. Like, he is an amazing Rubik's Cube guy. And um, uh, he bought out something called Cube Cards, which is a really nice thing that combines cards with Rubik's Cubes. So these have this specially printed deck with Rubik's Cubes cards on them. And what happens is they're all different mixes and they've all got different mixes on there. And they pick one and uh, the cube matches and then the cube solves and the card solves. It's, it's a really nice or really nice routine. It, it, it's, it's adding a prop to a Rubik's Cube routine, which makes it really interesting. Uh, and when you see Kev G do it, you'll immediately want to buy it. Now, I know that was marketed through Saturn Magic, so you can definitely get it through Saturn Magic, but it's probably available through all other Magic dealers as well. Uh, but that's a really nice uh, product, that is. Um, so, yeah, there's a few different things that you can look at. Uh, there's a few options, a few ideas, uh, but I definitely go, if you do mix and mingle magic, I definitely go with the original Rubik's Dream so you can get that mini shell. Okay, so the next question again is by Mr. Harmon. Uh, he says, I'm now his favourite magic channel. I'm super excited, dude. Thank you very much. That really does mean a lot, and I mean that seriously. Um, there are many magical ways to produce a deck of cards. What are some of your favourites? Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay, so uh, four spring instantly to mind that I use quite a lot. The first is 3D advertising by um, uh, Henry, Henry, Henry Evans. Uh, 3D advertising. And what it is, is you bring out like what looks like a, uh, a sort of a glossy fold out mini magazine from Bicycle. And it's got like different decks on there and pictures of different decks. And he's, uh, and the presentation is, hey, when I, when I buy a new pack of cards, this is where I get it from, Bicycle. And these are all the different cards I get to choose. Because being a magician, I can do this by magic. And you show the picture of a blue deck of cards or a red deck, depending on which one you get. And you snap your fingers. Poof, and it just drops out of the picture. The picture is now blank and you're left with a regular deck of cards with a regular box and everything's examinable and they can immediately examine the paper, they can examine the box and you can go into a card routine. That is really nice. 3D advertising with uh, Henry Evans. Also, you've got the Sudden Deck 3 by David Regal. If you don't know Sudden Deck 3, what rock have you been living under your whole life? Uh, but Sudden Deck 3 is amazing. You basically just show a blank fold-out pack of cards, you know, like a an empty tuck box, but like folded down and it's just completely blank. And the first thing you do is you snap your fingers and you print the box. Then you fold the box up, you snap your fingers again and you tip out the pack of cards. And it can be a regular pack of cards and you're into the routine. That's a really good one as well. Um, also, Empty. Can't remember the guy's name that created it, but it's called Empty. And it's by... Empty, empty, empty. I, I can't remember. I think Cosmo bought it out. Cosmo Magic bought it out. Just type in empty Cosmo Magic. You, you show this deck of cards. You show this card box and they can see it's empty. You can show them the inside of it and you just snap your fingers and you bring it out. So it's a bit like Sudden Deck, but it just it's a very different method and it really looks good. Sudden Deck is very much a case of a boom, 
boom. Well, this is like, look, I want you to see this is empty. Boom, now it's got a full deck of cards in it. Uh, so that's really good. Also, uh, if you go check out Miracle Material by Michael Kaminskus, Miracle Material by Michael Kaminskus, there's a fantastic production of a deck of cards in there. A fantastic production. He calls it flat pack, I think, or thin pack. And the idea is that you bring out this card box that's tiny thin, ridiculously thin, and you open it and there's like a 50 to one card in there. And you go, this, this is my deck of cards. And then you just shake it. And as you do, it turns into a regular pack of cards. And again, everything's examinable. So that's a really good way of doing it. And then if you get time, go check out Mark Sitcher. He's on YouTube. Unfortunately, he's passed away and he passed away at a very young age. It was quite tragic. But he did something called the Dental Act. And if you can find his DVD on the Dental Act, it's amazing because he does this, uh, this whole act themed to dental magic, right? It's so weird. It really is. But it's so cool and he opens up by producing little bottles of like Listerine and he produces four little bottles and he talks in there about how you can use the same technique to produce packs of cards. And that's something that I did for years, especially when I was, produce, when I was working restaurants. My opener would be to go to the table with my hands empty and say, hey, uh, my name's Craig, I'm, I'm your magician. Perhaps you'd like to, uh, to see a card trick. Uh, perhaps you'd like me to show you a card trick. Look, uh, we can use a red deck. Uh, if you want to, we can use a blue deck. We can even use a, a, a black deck or just for you, sir, we can produce a green deck. And then I just like grab one of those cards, got one of those decks and I'm good to go. So Mark Sitcher's Dental Act. And I think I've mentioned it on the channel before, but Gary Jones did a great opener for uh, restaurant workers where you have a notepad. Uh, as if you're taking an order in a restaurant and you literally just fold it around and it becomes a pack of cards. It was marketed through Magic Tao, the old Magic Tao, which aren't around anymore, but I think it's available through Murphy's in all good dealers. So there's some card productions, deck productions that you can use. I hope that uh, I hope that helps, Mr. Harmon. So the next question is by Magic Talk Live. Uh, let me see, Magic Talk Live. Question, do you have any favorite YouTube magicians that are strictly from YouTube? Mine is JS Magic. I've never seen JS Magic before, but I will check it out. I mean, YouTube has some great uh, magicians on there. I've actually got lists of people who I like here because I like watching them. The number one, of course, is Magic Orthodoxy. Uh, I think it's one of the best review channels on YouTube. Rather than just doing kind of what we do, so we do one review show a week and then I might do the odd review on 5x5, five five, this is a guy that does one video for each product and he really goes in depth with it. He's a very knowledgeable guy and he comes across very clear, very articulate, and uh, he just comes across as a very nice guy. Uh, I'd highly recommend checking out Magic, Magic Orthodoxy. It's a really good site uh, for reviews especially. Also, um, you've got the original Wizard product review that now call themselves Wizard Magic Review. Those guys are great. Uh, you know, they are the original review show and Dave and Sean and Wayne are still doing a really good job. So I'd, I'd recommend those as well. Um, who else? Uh, O'Brien Magic. If you haven't checked out O'Brien Magic, O'Brien Magic does some great stuff and has some really interesting topics. I like watching uh, his stuff. Uh, also, somebody I've recently just found and despite one thing that I am going to be talking about on uh, a Friday coming up soon, I do like this guy's channel. His name is Card Mechanic. Uh, Card Mechanic. And he's got some very interesting stuff on his channel. It's well worth checking him out as well. So Card, Me uh, Card Mechanic is really good. Anybody else I can recommend? You know what? One other person I'd say is Penguin Magic. Because Penguin Magic, you think of them as just a magic dealer. But they're doing this show every single week now. Uh, and, so, you know, I just watched one. What was it? It was like uh, the 10 best opening routines of all time. And I was watching it and it was like a 50 minute video. I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is really, really good. Um, so don't just think. Check out Penguin because don't just think that they're doing um, uh, like just product stuff. They actually do a lot more now. And so do Alakazam. You know, Alakazam is another example. Um, Peter and Harry do regular lives on YouTube. Uh, so it's well worth subscribing to Alakazam as well. But let me know down below, guys, if you're watching this Q&A, uh, what, what magicians on YouTube should I be checking out? I'd love to know. So the next question is by Sean McNulty. And Sean asks, are there any good multi-phase two-card transfer routines? Uh, Thanks for the question, Sean. Nice to see you back on the channel. And the answer is yes, there's quite a few of them. And it's millions, really, isn't there, to be honest? Um, I've put a couple in print over the years, but forget about mine. Uh, I, you know, one of my favorites is, uh, is by Jay Sankey. He uses a dupe, and I, I'm going to do this on a Magic Live at some point, but this is something that I've done for years. Um, it's basically, very, very simply, just the case of 
having having a dupe, and he's got a two-phase routine. Uh, as you would imagine with Sankey, it uses the twirl change and it uses the Erdnase change. But the construction is so nice. It is it is probably the best two-card transpo routine I've ever seen. It's beautiful. I've got one which uh, I'm going to be talking about on the Magic Live soon, which is a two-card transpo, but there's no extra cards. There's no uh, dupes, uh, and it uses some very different techniques. But the one I've always gone to is the Jay Sankey one. Um, also, Richard Sanders on the Richard Sanders show has a really nice uh, sort of multiple uh, two card transpo thing that works really, really well as well. So check out Richard Sanders on the Richard Sanders show. Check out Jay Sankey. Jay's was definitely on his LNL DVD set. So you can check that out on his LNL DVD set. If you haven't got that, you really should check it out. Um, yeah, and I'll be doing mine on a Magic Live at some point soon. Uh, I hope that answered the question uh, quite well. And also, Ian Rand's blank card routine, prime importance, could that work in a parlor type environment? Absolutely. If you're considering parlor the same as me, which is less than 30 people, uh, less than 25 people, sort of more of a smaller audience, then yes, it would work absolutely 100%. Hope that helps. So the next question is by Dale Senior. Hey, Dale, how you doing? Uh, thank you for answering my question. No problem. You're more than welcome. Thanks for asking it. My question for this week is, what's the furthest you have traveled to perform at a paid gig? Well, I'm going to assume that you're talking about me and not my company, because as my company... We've sent magicians all over the world. Um, you know, I've sent Nemed and Alex to Dubai. We've sent magicians all over the world. But if you're talking about me and me alone, um, I've performed, I mean, I've gone abroad. I've performed abroad a few times. I've done a lot of ships in my career. Uh, I've also been booked for private parties in several different parts of Spain, Gibraltar, um, America. So I've been, ab I've been abroad quite a lot. I've been to Ireland quite a few times. Um, but if you're talking about just the UK, you know, I've been up and down. I've been the length and breadth of the UK. I remember, you know, I don't forget, I did the holiday park circuit, man. I did the holiday park circuit. And when you do holiday parks, you are literally all over the place. I've gone to John and Groats and Land's End and all points in between. I remember the worst drive we ever did in the first year of doing the Illusion Shot holiday parks. We were in Torquay Sands. Now, bearing in mind, I'm based in the Midlands area. I'm based in Staffordshire, Cannock. So... Um, it was about four hours just to get down to, um, four and a half hours just to get down to Torquay. We were at Torquay Sands. We did a show at Torquay Sands. We didn't go until 10. So by the time we got the illusions back in the van and got back to the, uh, go back to, got back to our caravan, it was probably coming close on midnight. The next day we we're in Eymouth. Now, if you don't know Eymouth, it's on the Scottish border. So we had to go from the south to the Scottish border and we had to be there at six o'clock to set up. And from memory, it was something like a, it was something like a 13 hour drive or something, uh, perhaps even longer. So we, we, we left at four. Uh, we had about four hours sleep in the caravan. We then left in at four. We got in the van. We got straight up there. We got there about half five, set up, and then went to the caravan to sleep for a few hours. That was a horrible one. I remember also once doing a series of shows at Cadbury World with John Kimmo, and we had an illusion show. And we had to do three, cab three illusion shows in Cadbury World, which is in Birmingham. And then in the evening, we had to be on the Isle of Wight to do a run of four shows on the Isle of Wight. So we finished at, uh, I think, about three o'clock at Cadbury World. And then we went straight down to get the ferry to get over to the Isle of Wight to do a show that evening in the Isle of Wight. Uh, Craig Tor is really far. It's a haven park. It used to be Butlins many years ago, but it's a haven park. That is Far man, that is ridiculous. That's like you hit Scotland, you see, you see um, Glasgow and Edinburgh, and you just keep on going. Um, and yeah, I've done Craig Tour a few times. That's really far away. So I, I've travelled. You know, I've 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 travelled the length and breadth of the UK. Uh, but that's what you have to do, kind of, when you first become a professional magician. Before you can kind of command the fee that you want to command, you have to kind of just get the performing experience and you go where the money is and you know especially with holiday parks you're going all over the place just yesterday I mean if you've been following my Instagram or my Facebook you'll know that just yesterday uh well I say yesterday it is yesterday this is going up on Sunday I'm filming this on Thursday on Wednesday so yesterday for where I am right now I uh I went to London to do a show 
uh, in central London. I did a series of illusion shows in central London, socially distant illusion shows. And I had to be there to set up at nine o'clock. So me and Kat, who's the assistant in my show, uh, or one of them, she, uh, she and I, we left at 4.45 in the morning to get to the, uh, to get to the venue to set up. And we probably got back at about half 11. So it was about an 18, 19 hour day. Um, but that's the thing with illusion shows. That's the thing with illusion shows. Uh, so yeah, I've traveled, but what about you guys? What's the furthest you've been? I would love to know in the comments. Okay, so the next question is by Stephen Cooper. I love this question. He says, I love the channel, helping me out so much. No problem, Stephen, that's what it's here for. Uh, questions, what do you think are some of the biggest performance bad habits you've had to break? How did you break them? What are the most common ones you see in other magicians? I get very told, I get told very often I need to slow down. You know, that's something that I've dealt with as well, slowing down. Um, you know, when I first started performing, I go really, really fast and I go really, really quickly. And, and, and you do have to slow down when you're a performer. You have to make sure that you're very articulate. And I, I went to have lessons on this to actually help me. And I think that that's something that magicians need to do. You know, rather than spending money on the latest magic trick or the next best magic trick, I think sometimes you need to, t you need to spend money on improving yourself as a performer if you're serious. You know, I've talked about this before, but Ryland gets weekly acting lessons uh, because he's desperate to be a performer. He wants to be a professional magician. And I've tried to install into him from a young age that if you are a performer, the most important thing is learn how to perform. So yeah, slowing down is very important. I think one of the big, when you become a professional magician anyway, one of the big uh, habits that you have to break is being lazy. I think it's very easy to be lazy. It's why I'm kind of, when I get booked to do business talks, it's why I always advocate getting out the house. Because if you're running your magic business from in your house, there are so many distractions, especially if you have a partner that goes to work, because that partner won't understand. They'll just see that you're at home and they'll have you do loads of chores and, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? And that takes you away from actually being able to run your business as a business. It's kind of like, right, I'm going to get up, I'm having a cup of coffee, I'll put the TV on while I drink my coffee, all oh, right, now I'll check Facebook, right, oh look, this is on, let me just watch this, uh, and there's so many distractions, before you know it, you've been a busy fool, you've gone through the whole day and you've actually achieved nothing, so I think one of the biggest things that magicians need to get out of is, um, uh, is uh, you know, you have to work hard, you know, it's very, very important that you have to work hard, right, and if you're not working hard, um, then your business isn't going to be where it's going to be. Uh, what else? You know what a big habit I have, if you look at some of my old videos, and especially like I'm talking around about the red time, um, I used to have this really bad habit of uh, licking my fingers. It's horrible, it's disgusting. And it was just, uh, I didn't even realise I was doing it half the time. And, you know, when, when the entire magic community turned against me, I remember this guy, what was his name, man? Uh, Jersey Magic Reviews or something is on Facebook. Look him up. He did a review of Red and he just frigging went for me big time. Oh my gosh. And he, uh, he, he, he pointed that, that thing out. And it was kind of at that time and I had to kind of make a conscious effort. The reason I was doing it is because I get very dry hands and I was trying to moisten my fingers before I do a move. But, it, you know, it is... It will, disgusting it really is and I kind of use moisturizer now so I don't do that anymore but that was a big thing that I did for years that I wasn't even kind of aware of it and I think that's the thing sometimes you, you're not even aware of your bad habits until you point until you have people point them out to you and you need to make sure that people are pointing them out to you uh, and then because the only way you can work on this stuff is if you're aware of it right and if you're not aware of it it's very very difficult outside of that I think um, I think the most important thing as a magician one of the most important habits to make is you've got to turn up and you've got to smell nice you got to turn up you've got to smell nice and you've got to be well uh, well dressed and that doesn't mean you have to be in a suit and tie a lot of the time when I do a gig I'm not in a suit and tie but I am in probably smart black jeans a smart t-shirt black t-shirt and a, a suit jacket I will wear suits sometimes as you've probably seen on my videos but I think you've got to look presentable and I think that's you know presentable and good hygiene and you know I, I, that should go without saying but if you've ever been to Blackpool and you've experienced the stink that is the Blackpool Magic Convention um, it has convinced me that the magic community are the most unwashed people in the entire world um, they really are so you know there's another bad habit to break good hygiene very very important um, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. I mean, you can get down to it and talk about moves. You know, sometimes people have tells with moves, but that's kind of more about practice. What I'm talking about here is the more general, you know, um, more general bad habits that you need to break. 
Okay, so the next question is by uh, Mexi Mex. How you doing? Uh, he's talking about playing cards, and I suppose it has time to ask the question too. So keeping with the cards, what is your favourite deck order? Chased or shocked, or something else, and why? Personally, I prefer shocked, as it makes more sense to me. Uh, I just prefer chased. Um, only because that's what I learned when I first started. When I first got into Magic, I learned Chase because I learned uh, the Cy Stebbins deck, and I think in Adult Magic by Paul uh, by Paul Daniels, it talked about Chase, and so I learned Chase. And when I realised there were other orders of cards, I already had Chase embedded into my head. So I mean, there's no right or wrong way. Certain tricks you need them in a particular order, but if you're just wanting to know the order of of the suits. For me, personally, it's Chase, not that there's anything wrong with Shocked, but I prefer Chase. Right, so the next question is by uh, Mr. Harmon, and the question is, what is your favourite magic trick that you have created? What is your favourite? Oh my gosh, it is very difficult to say what the favourite magic trick it depends on if you mean a marketed trick or a trick that I've kind of kept for myself. I do a really nice routine with a destination box, John Allen's destination box that I do in Cabaret that I've probably only shared with about five people uh, ever. Um, and, and, and they all do it as well. And it's like my go-to cabaret routine. I've also got another routine that I do in my cabaret show, in my illusion show, which is like a four-person um, tossed out deck but it doesn't use the tossed out deck and they're on stage with me and that's a great routine as well they're probably my two favorite routines but they're not being published because you've got to remember I didn't publish stuff for many 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 years if you're talking about my published stuff I'm very 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 proud of the stuff that I did with the flipper coin because when I bought that DVD out, nobody was doing anything with the flipper coin. And I was kind of the first guy to say, well, look, this is what you can do. These are the possibilities. Um, I also am obviously very fond of Keymaster and very fond of Chop. Those are two of the tricks that kind of put me on the map back in the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in a situation right now where I'm slowly going to be doing some more... Uh, products maybe over the next year or two at some point it's not like a massive high priority for me but at some point in the next year or two I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be bringing out some stuff that I've created over the last 10 years and sharing it with you if you want to know my favorite coin routine by the way and it's the routine that I do every single gig it's uh, it's a routine called security pen which I've done on a Magic Live, but you can find it on my At The Table lecture from Murphy's, which you can get for like six quid as a download or something. But uh, my At The Table lecture had security pen on it, which I absolutely love. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a killer routine, it really is. So there you go. There's a few different ones for you. I love Keymaster, I love Chop, I love my stuff with the flipper coin, and I love security pen. But you know what? Every single routine I've created and released at the time, it felt like a good idea. I don't think I've done much stuff that's bad. Uh, obviously, I've done a couple of honest trailers on Red and also on Pool Ball Miracles. And even on Pool Ball Miracles, there was a couple of good tricks. But, um, you know, they're definitely the weaker things that I've released. But generally, as a rule, if I've created it, I've performed it. And I've performed it, I'm happy with it. And that's why I've released it. Um, so at some point... I was happy with all of these routines, but if you're talking about the best, that's probably the list, the, the, the ones that I perform all the time. Right, right, that's it. Thank you very much, guys, for asking so many questions. You guys, absolutely awesome. I could not do this without you, so your support means the world to me. Check out the website. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the website. Check out the podcast as well. Remember, you can subscribe to it everywhere. Uh, I'll put links down below for Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And other than that, thank you very much for uh, watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Like the video. Leave a comment down below. I read every comment and I try to answer every single one of them. And I will see you again soon. Have a great weekend. My name's Craig from Magic TV.